Hello and welcome to the Temple Mount Podcast. My name is Shogun. Joining me today is my good friend traveling through time to discuss his hard reboot of civilization, his radical vision for a new society based on the hexarchy, the number six, and a whole bunch of really intense city planning and constitutional reform and all kinds of things. And we'll get into that right away, but join the Temple Mount Discord server and subscribe to our BitChute and YouTube channels, Temple Mount Discord podcast, official, whatever. You'll find it if you try. That being said, welcome traveling through time. Thank you for joining me. How are you today, sir? Doing great. Very excited to chat about this very important topic. I'm very excited about it as well. So for those who is probably everybody who doesn't know the context of this, traveling through time has spent a lot of time, and I mean a lot of time, coming up with everything from a new economy to a new political system to a new architectural system to a new agricultural system to a new theological system and political system is extremely involved. I've read some of the documentation. I've seen some of the videos. I am very impressed with the amount of work that you've put into it. You obviously believe in it and you put a lot of time into it. At the same time, it does sound crazy as heck because you call yourself the new Pope. You say it's based on the 666 and that you're the Messiah. But at the same time, it's pretty impressive what you've done. So why don't you walk us through what is the Arcology Project? So there's two parts. The Arcology itself is a modular Arcology, which is an entire city inside of one building. It is a science fiction uh, term, but um, to date, no one has built an actual Arcology worldwide, so this would be the first one on Earth. Modular meaning it's made up of thousands of identical pieces that connect to themselves. The other half of the system is the new constitution. There's actually four contracts. So I, um, there's a city-state constitution, which is one. There is corporate reform, which is two, corporate ownership reform. There is a global military federation, which is the third contract. And then the fourth contract is um, to create communes inside of this, uh, this arcology. So that's pretty much the um, the initial breakdown of it, and the main goal, the long-term goal, is uh, I wouldn't say perfect sustainability, but pretty damn close, very close to perfect sustainability, and a two-day work week with uh, retiring around 45-ish. So <clears throat> again, what you've created is a new constitution a 3D visual rendering of a new city planning model. And your basic concept here is individual city-states will replace the unified United States of America and each city-state will be able to establish its own political policy. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, each city is sovereign. So it's like, so, the, like the 10th Amendment on steroids. So uh, the Congress, as we know it, is dissolved and Washington DC as we know it is dissolved and it's uh, it's replaced by the, these military federations all right so when you say military federations why are these city-states inherently militarized like are you saying are replacing civil society with military uh, martial law it's kind of like NATO so it's a peacekeeping force between the cities but it's a peacekeeping force that's based on private capital rather than national sovereignty, right? So when you join one of these um, military federations, you essentially uh, create or you join a Senate for that military. And then the Senate uh, pretty much controls like funding and orders of the military. So, um, there's like a indirect command process, but the Senate is not a legislature. It's very important. So the militaries are not in control of any law. I see. So how did you come across the idea of basing everything on the number six? 
specifically because you call it a hexarchy and hex means six and my understanding is your city planning is based on modular hexagram hexagrammatic or hexa hexagraphic architecture Why? yeah so the modular arcology can be built in several different ways you can do squares and rectangles very easily uh you can do triangles pretty easily um but I just like the uh, the hexagon. It has a very futuristic um, look to it, and uh, I think uh, six is a divine number because of uh, two times three, and it has a three-way radial symmetry. So you could have two, three, or six for radial symmetry. So what is the meaning of saying two times three? Why is that significant? Well, because uh, it's, it's two times three. Well, what do you mean? What, what does that mean? Six is three? six is divisible by two and three. Right, but you can't explain why that matters or why that is important. Uh, so it it just um, creates like divine geometry, and you can uh, create. A massive number of like beautiful blueprints and beautiful floor plans and beautiful architectural arrangements to to that divine geometry okay so you believe the system should be monarchical correct um it used to be it was originally a monarchy and then uh, people were kind of grumpy about that word so I created the Hexarchy, which is the exact same responsibilities as a monarch, except it's six people instead of one. <laughs> and this, again, has nothing to do with the Hexarchy from Warhammer 40,000. Complete coincidence. It, it's exists. a total coincidence, yes. Interesting. So and I saw, and I will say, for anyone listening to this, so where, okay, shout out, where can they find your website or your whatever your youtube channel where you have all your stuff it is youtube at a r k o l o g y underscore city arcology underscore city all right so you want to provide a universal basic income correct yeah it scales with age and turns into social security Right, so you get more money as you age. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you explain your concept of uh, the psychopath courts? Oh, okay. So that one's a little bit... Um, that might be a little unpopular. Might be a little spicy. So these will be um, close-knit communities. They'll be smaller city sizes. The city size is a maximum of 144,000 for biblical reasons. So, and it's a higher density than Manhattan. So you're going to be like on foot a lot. You're going to be walking around. You're going to like going up and down elevators with people, stuff like that. So, um, like psychopathic people or sociopathic people uh, will be very problematic to the community. And so there is an article in the Constitution that allows people to identify sociopaths and then put them on trial for things they said or did. And if, if a jury finds it to be sociopathic behavior, then uh, the first strike is uh, therapy, the second strike is some more therapy, and then the third strike you have a uh, chance to be ostracized from the city. Uh, okay, so that's that process, and um, you've described yourself as being the Pope of this system. Is that where you would see yourself, or are you more like the King, or are you the King and the Pope? Like, how does that work? Um, well, I'm not really the King anymore, so, and I don't think I'm the Pope either. Uh, I guess I could be like a cultural leader, but... The uh, the king status has been uh, replaced with 
the hexer key. Which I think is nice anyway, because as king, you don't want to be too busy. Like, it's it's nice to split duties up between six people. Right. <clears throat> so you have some kind of high council, but didn't you say that you saw yourself as some kind of messiah, messiah type role? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of strange things with um, biblical prophecy. Like, um, it's it's named Arcology with an A-R-K, so it's like Noah's Ark. And uh, I'm essentially building it for uh, to shield society from like geopolitical storms coming in the future. Like uh, peak oil, uh, the housing crisis, the New World Order, like... It's like being built in defense of those things. So, um, it's kind of interesting that an, an arcology with a C, A-R-C, uh, is a science fiction term that actually goes back to the 60s. So, kind of interesting. And then, um, uh, Jordan Peterson has this, um, think tank called A-R-C, ARC. And they're looking for a voluntary, visionary plan for the future. And uh, it says in the Bible that uh, the coming of the Son of Man will be like a flash of lightning that lights up the sky. So, and Jordan Peterson's organization is ARC, like an electric arc. And I'm telling him about the arc, which is the name of my city. And if he presents my city... To the new constitution to the world it essentially creates a new golden age instantly like as like a giant flash of light worldwide so your idea is to reboot civilization starting with the united states by dissolving the federal government into a series of independent sovereign city states that operate on pseudo anarcho capitalist grounds but with some kind of religious messianic basis in order to create a better constitution and a better society yeah if you read revelation if you read prophecy um they do talk about n uh new covenants replacing old covenants and um like christ when he came he created a new covenant which was the new testament and the new testament replaced the old testament because it was it was superior and it actually says in Hebrews, it says that uh, it, it was superior to the Old Covenant because it was built on better promises. So that's exactly what I'm doing with my new constitution, which is a covenant. And the name of the constitution is actually the Covenant of the Ark, is the name of the constitution. And um, it's, it's half the word count of the U.S. Constitution. Um, but since there's no legislature, since the legislature is completely abolished, the Constitution actually contains the entirety of the law and all of the regulations, and all of the welfare and all the taxation of society. So, so it, go ahead. Can you summarize the top three priorities that you would change? Let's say you were voted into presidency or kingship or whatever the supreme head honcho is. What would be the first three things you'd change about society? Um, I would say I would abolish the landlord contract would be a first one. And especially for people who own more than like three houses, like that would be like kind of a compromise. So you say like any if you own more than three houses, you can't be a landlord. Um, and then I would probably default on the national debt, either through just saying I de just declaring a default or through uh, some sort of mild hyperinflation, one of the two. And then the hyperinflation would actually help reduce the debt load of society as well. And then I would probably uh, implement uh, a universal basic income and slash like tons and tons of departments and tons and tons of budgets. So the universal basic income would probably be like three hundred or six hundred dollars a month in that range. Um, and then uh, yeah, that's pretty much a good start.
So, how would you deal with the issue of other city-states that are near you potentially having mutually exclusive or contradictory political goals to your city-state? And in other words, all I'm asking really is, wouldn't dividing the federal government into individual sovereign city-states lead to competition and warfare between those city-states? And wouldn't that be an inherently bad thing? Um, it would actually lead to less warfare because you could have the socialists uh, live in their their like centralized failure <laughs> in their own city state. The socialism would be isolated to to one or two or five city states, and then you could continue capitalism with you know ten other city states, and then you can have a hybrid, uh, some kind of libertarian hybrid of both with uh you know another 10 city states and see how that goes and you can play with different tax rates in all of the different uh city states as well oh yeah something i didn't mention since we're using the declaration of independence we're starting from a clean slate in, in terms of budgeting and law so there's a zero percent income tax zero percent payroll tax and almost a zero dollar property tax your property tax is going to be like one or two hundred bucks for most people so if you are living in your hexarchy system, you're receiving a universal basic income, your rent is affordable, everything's accessible by foot. But what is the basis of the 666 you know, thing? Because I read your proposal and there was a specific part where it said everything's based on a 666 structure. So can you explain that in a way that would help the Christians in the audience to not be so suspicious of it? Because when you put it forward as a universal government system based on 666, you know, Christians are going to see that as like the mark of the beast. Well, the two times three thing, like I mentioned earlier, and then uh, carbon atom is six neutrons, six protons and six electrons. And the carbon atom is the fundamental building block of all life on earth all organic chemistry is uh, carbon atoms and <clears throat> carbon atoms actually naturally form into hexagons they always create hexagons so because hexagons are actually the strongest structure in the universe they're the most stable structure in the universe and um, like a diamond is a hexagonal lattice of carbon atoms and it's the strongest material known to mankind it's like the strongest material in the universe so um, it ties in with the hexagons of the infrastructure of the city and then um, I just like base six numbers so like 3 6 9 12 24 30 36 60 90 120 180 blah 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 so, um, almost all of the numbers in the entire constitution, including like the formulas and the taxes and stuff like that, is all of those numbers. So all the numbers you looked at is like 30, 60, 120, 180, 360, 240, etc., etc. Well, <clears throat> Nikola Tesla said if you could understand the mystery of 369, you would understand the whole universe or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So give us your sales pitch right now. Anyone who's listening to this, let's say 100 to 200 people listen to this podcast. What do you want them to hear? What is your, really your message? So <clears throat> Christians are consumed by the rapture. They're consumed by tribulation. And almost no one is even thinking about the kingdom of God which is the prize <laughs> it's it's like that's like the goal that's the prize at the end of the tunnel no one's even talking about it no one's thinking about it no one's saying oh what would that look like how would we manifest that there's two billion christians on this earth we, like, we could move mountains literally if we really wanted to so um so yeah, that's that's something that I set my mind to using uh, the Declaration of Independence and a little bit of creativity and um, you know a few years to kind of meditate on things and uh, it's it's really turned into uh, 
uh, this this really profound, really groundbreaking project and vision, and um, it's uh like you know it, it's not it's not made out of gemstones and stuff like that, uh, like Revelation. It doesn't fall down from the heavens like in Revelation, but it is um it is pretty utopian. I mean, we're talking about. Uh, a two-day work week for working-class people, and their wives could stay home with the kids and collect a UBI. And even working two days a week, you can pay off your mortgage and retire at like 45 years old, according to uh, the the microeconomic <clears throat> calculations. Bro, two days work week, retire at 45. Sounds like a plan. <coughs> Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's build multi-level hexagrammatic scaffolding multi-level fucking agriculture and let's build a futuristic techno utopia where the word of god will be ensconced as law and scientific enlightenment will be the way let's do it why not exactly that's exactly what i'm trying to say <laughs> what, what do we what do we have to lose what do we have to lose all i ask is you change it from a 666 basis to an 888 basis because at the end of the day the octagon is more stable than the hexagon eight is higher than two six is the number of humanity 666 is the number of the beast 777 is the number of god 888 is the number of infinity and eternity so we should make uh, an 888 base structure, but that is something we can cross, you know, as we come to it. Maybe we start with 666 and we go 777888. I don't know, but I do commend you on your commitment to your project, the depth and breadth of consideration you've given to it. And I think people should check out your website and check out your YouTube videos to see how it actually manifests. But does anyone in the audience have a question or a comment? for Mr. Traveling Through Time. If not Traveling Through Time, what is the main, main political message you want people to uh, Democracy has failed us. Representative democracy is a um, psychic disease. <laughs> and... Uh, and with um, the Declaration of Independence, and even a lot of the Bible gives us the legal and theological tools to um, just disregard it, to walk away from that cult, and to start something brand new and something fresh. And um, it even says, I think in this Isaiah, I don't forget the exact verse, but it says... Um, he regards the nations as uh, worthless and less than nothing. I got a question. How old are you? Thirty-six. Oh man, you got you got a couple more years. After forty years old, you might learn a lot more in four more years. That's possible. I learned a whole lot oh, in yeah. the last four 40 years. Forty is a big number in the Bible. 40 well, is a big number in the Bible. So, but 2027's coming up, and you Amen. y'all gonna fit every mostly everything is going to be revealed to the human race. We just in did. I agree. 2027 is a big year. 2027 is the year we set a World of Darkness campaign on the server. You can hear all 17 episodes of that. 2027 is coming soon. It's right around the corner, and a lot of people think it'll be a big year. But I want to thank tra traveling through time. I want to thank Open Eye for being part of this podcast and uh, traveling through time. If you want to do other episodes in the future to expand on your vision for human society, let's do. That. Oh, I can keep going. But for now, I'm going to say, yeah. All right, keep going. Give us, give us, give us another round. So, um, yeah, with these arc people, um, do you know who Eric Weinstein is? Vaguely, he's like a Hollywood celebrity who is accused of sex crimes. That's <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you're close though. But uh, yeah, he's one of the intellectual dark web guys. He's been on Joe Rogan a bunch, and uh, okay. he he's part of the Arc Forum, 
and he he was on a podcast recently and um he couldn't stop talking about how uh the academic world needs to come together during this time of crisis and create a new economic system that's not capitalism and not communism and it's instead it's instead something brand new entirely which is well, it's what, socialism no not socialism socialism sucks too it's um that's what i sent him i sent him that system so he's basically talking about um about that and uh and then in the same interview the interviewees suggested that we needed to abandon democracy and choose a dictator and and uh, by choosing a dictator we can do away with like this weird cult that everyone is stuck in perpetually stuck in like talking about oh who are you voting for 2020 2024 this 2024 that every single day rfk trump DeSantis, blah 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 biden every single day and it's like this weird cult that doesn't actually discuss anything real and doesn't actually discuss human progress and doesn't discuss ideas it only discusses like the character of these fake ass politicians who aren't going to change anything anyway I agree. I think democracy is a lie because democracy is mediocracy because democracy is ruled by the majority and the majority always clusters at the center of a standard distribution and everything statistically falls into a standard distribution, which means that democracy means that the most votes will be applied by the mediocre, not the high nor the low, but the middle of society will determine the direction of future culture. And that doesn't make sense because what you would want is the upper echelons of the intelligentsia to make policy related decisions relevant to their spheres of understanding rather than having that being determined by masses of people who are ignorant of the subject on which they are voting. So democracy allows mediocrity and the rule of the ignorant, whereas having a benevolent dictator in a school of techno adepts who would handle certain policy prescriptions would be optimal if you could create it but i don't know if that's what your program manifests but well, that's what i um, think needs to be manifested yeah and uh my proposal um avoids the central point of failure by having <clears throat> by having like dozens or even hundreds of these these monarchies so um, the best monarchies would thrive, and then the other monarchies would copy those cities. But if you're talking about monarchies of specific cities, that's like not really a monarchy. Like, Why not? This would be a whole bunch of fake blood involved, right? Like, how are you going to establish a monarchy and be like, from now on, we're royalty? Like, you know, if you're not part of an existing monastic dynasty. How are you going to position yourself in such a way that people will see you as a king or a queen if you don't derive from a king or a queen from an established bloodline? I mean, it oh, sounds it's arbitrary, but... It's not hereditary. Well, you know, traditionally speaking, monarchy means dynastic, hereditary transmission of power. So it goes from father to son. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Well, then how do you establish a new monarchy? On what basis do you claim royalty? Um, you would probably... Well, first of all, I would claim royalty because I'm the author of the Constitution. So, it's pretty much like... I, I get the this, this spot. And then um, I would appoint my successors. So, you wouldn't do it based on dynastic succession. You'd do it on meritocracy? Correct, yeah. How would you assess meritocratic value? In other words, how would, on what basis would you determine who deserved or did not deserve power? Achievement. Well, so they have they have you know ten or twenty years to prove themselves, and if they do, they get appointed. Well, what what did you achieve? I wrote the Constitution. And I built the 3D oh, infrastructure. Man. 
that stuff that stuff you're saying i mean um i agree on universal payment for uh because ai is taking over the um and all the immigrants are taking our jobs so the congress is actually making us uh go down the pipe you know of of pro poverty and stuff so they're gonna have to give us a universal uh uh, payment once a month, but it's gonna have to be at least fifteen hundred, uh, fifteen hundred dollars, just for people to survive, not six hundred. Okay, <laughs> there's no way anybody could survive with six hundred dollars a month, because rent, rent, six hundred dollars a month, even higher. So that that's your plan is failed right there with the, your Pacifics that you told us. Your your plan has failed. Because no one could survive with six hundred dollars a month, no one. But it's supplemental; it's not it's not one hundred percent of your income. And then you also have more than one adult per household. So you're talking about um, two adult households. That's twelve hundred. And then we also have uh, affordable housing and almost no property tax. So uh, our the rent in our system would be like three hundred to four hundred dollars a month, and your property tax would be like fifty dollars a month. And then your UBI would be like twelve hundred. Well, I would get rid of all the taxes. I already figured out a plan to save the, this government and the world. And well, we're going to do your podcast probably tomorrow. When I yeah, but so uh, let's save that. Let's save that. Traveling, traveling. What could you do with it? potentially infinite gold sent to you in amethyst briefcases? I could build a lot of cities until the yeah. gold price crashes from uh, hyperinflation. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have right. my direct access to my vortex of creation soon, which has. Ladies and gold gentlemen, <laughs> I want to do a podcast with you about your vortex of creation, Hugh, and I want to do a podcast with you <laughs> and I about your beliefs as well. But I think for now, who hears this on YouTube or BitChute? But yeah, there's uh, so much potential, like culturally and artistically and architecturally, that um, I can't really capture it as one person. You have to kind of run the experiment with all of those uh, unique souls, adding their own special contributions to to the environment. And um, I did a pretty good job as one person, but it it it'll, it takes your breath away especially if it's the first time you're seeing it um but it's it's nowhere near its maximum potential yet traveling would our economy collapse if we had access to infinite gold the, so that's a question for for another day but we're gonna wrap it up now thank you traveling through time for being with us thank you to the live audience recorders uploaders and everybody listening on youtube and bitch you and uh but check out the hexarchy, check out the arcology, check out the visual imaging and the documents that Traveling Through Time has made. You can find all that on the Temple Mount Discord server, Temple Mount Podcast, Discord, YouTube, and BitChute. God bless. Don't take the mark of the beast. God bless everyone. All right. Thank you. Good job. A single biblical prophecy is more powerful than 1,000 World Economic Forums.